Ready for the challenge? I didn't sign up for any challenge. <laughs> I signed you up for the challenge. Uh -huh. In today's episode, we're mixing things up with a little roll swap on board Carl. For the day, Flo will be stepping up as a skipper while I take on the role of his crew. But before we set sail from this breathtaking anchorage, Los Gatos, we're taking you on a little paddleboard excursion. There's a hidden lagoon here with a very special shape, but you'll have to watch to find out exactly what it is. Let's just say it is a shape that fits my current mood pretty well. It's so quiet. It's amazing. And it's kind of cool that we're like paddling on this little lake and then you can see the boat mass just over there. Colors are really pretty. This lagoon is kind of like turquoise, but milky turquoise, and then there's like a green yellowish vegetation around the lake, and then the cacti, obviously. And the only thing that you can hear is like the little fish jumping and the pelicans fishing. This whole lake has the shape of a heart when you look at it from above. So on top of being beautiful, it's also super romantic. Oh, and a heart-shaped lake. Yay! <laughs> was totally psyched. Ready for the challenge? I didn't sign up for any challenge. <laughs> I signed you up for the challenge. Uh -huh. What do we need to do down there to get the engine running? Well, first clean up the rest. No, we're, we're pretending to, as if I'm moving the boat, not you. you oh, know. okay. <laughs> well, I guess I turn on the, uh, the electricity, which is moving one way or the other, and I can't remember which. Okay, there's another thing you need to do down there which is switching on the autopilot and the instrument. And then find the autopilot, which is somewhere. How about navigation instrument? That's a good question. Well, Nika, this is a challenge for me. <laughs> hey Flo, we're a bit in a hurry, so... Yeah, yeah. So whoever's watching this, um, there will be a part two navigating my own boat. <laughs> so are you complaining about the way Carl is being navigated? No. I think uh, the navigation is the best part. <laughs> but everything else is uh, often difficult to find here. <clears throat> You want to leave this on? Are you okay leaving it on when you navigate? Well, navigating car is like driving a submarine. <laughs> what? So you can't see anything except if you poke your head out. So there you have your answer. Yeah. So it's changing the submarine mode. <laughs> Ready to pick up anchor? Are you? Ready to pick up anchor? <laughs> <laughs> I just have to turn the red key. I'm totally ready. So I don't like I don't like my my own mainsail because it's a rolling uh, rolling boom, and it's not optimal for uh, for all weather conditions. But preparing so much easier because you just don't have to do anything. That's where my laziness comes from. Do you want your crew to take the snubber off? Yes. Can you say pretty please? Please take your snubber off. I'll, I'll do what I'm told. Well, 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 let's 
see what he's doing back there. I think he can go a bit faster. I think Flo is not exactly thrilled about our role change, but I think it's important for him to walk through all the steps himself. It's one thing to watch and it's another to actually do it. And for me, this role change was a total eye opener. It made me realize there are a few things on Carl that I've just grown used to, but definitely have room for improvement to make things easier and smoother and therefore eventually safer. We made it to Agua Verde just when the sun was setting. The scenery was once again stunning and Flo was happy that he could drop the hook and take off the captain's hat for now. We're sailing from Agua Verde to Loreto, where we need to get a little bit of fuel for the last crossover to Guaymas and Buba needs to do her paperwork for a flight to Germany. We've had quite the beautiful morning so far. And the wind has been exactly spot on from what the forecast had been saying. It's pretty amazing. We started off and the wind was coming from the east and there was a catamaran in front of us. We were still on our port tack and they were already on the starboard tack. And we could see like, it was exactly at the time that the forecast was switching from easterly winds to the westerlies. And now we found westerly winds for the past, I don't even know, maybe two hours. Beautiful wind, um, 15 to 18 knots, and we were doing like 5.7 pacing. And now the wind is clocking around towards southerly winds. It's dead on the forecast, it's amazing, it's pretty amazing. This is our second last voyage before Waimas, where Carl is going to be hauled out for hurricane season and uh, it's just so beautiful that we have this nice wind. We've been sailing all day so far. It makes it all the more harder to know that soon it's going to be time to leave the boat. But possibly new adventures ahead. Flo and I am just discussing a couple of plans for winter, but more about that some other time. We anchored just outside a little harbor in Loreto. To be honest, I wasn't exactly looking forward to getting back to a more urban area, but Loreto completely surprised me. It's actually a charming little town with plenty of cozy bars and restaurants, and while searching for dinner, we stumbled upon a spot with swing chairs and dangerously tasty whiskey sours. And as if that wasn't enough, they also had live music. What a treat. I was actually quite glad we made this stop. So, I'm in Loreto. We still have 115, 120 miles to go, and unfortunately, weather doesn't look too promising. And as usual, I did my fuel calculation for about an hour and a half, um, and I decided that we're gonna need two more jerry cans. Luckily, 
David here, who lives close to Loreto. He's uh, been a patron for quite some while of uh, Untie the Lions. Thank you. Um, we got in contact and he offered to give me a hand with my chores here in Loreto and we're on our way to the gas station. How's it going? It's going really well. I've heard you have a sailboat now yourself. I do. I have a 38 foot Ericsson uh, mm -hmm. that I bought back in December and I've been sailing for a long time. Uh, learned when I was in college and uh, and it's been kind of a dream uh, after watching channels like like Nika's <laughs> and, and uh, yeah, so I'm getting used to it. It's a, it's a large boat, so it, it makes it all the more impressive to see when someone is sailing and living aboard and going from place to place and, and doing the things that people like me can do. So it's really inspiring to, to, be, to have any kind of part in this channel. So it's, it's a real honor. And we are also, we're talking single-handed sailing today, um, early on with uh, my crew Flo. And what were we talking about? We were talking about anchoring. So I had a stat professor who taught me how to sail on the agreement that I would crew for him. And so I did that for four years while I was at the University of Arkansas. And that was, that's how I learned to sail. Then didn't sail for 30 years. And then moving to Mexico and specifically moving to a coastal location, it was all with the idea that I want a sailboat. And so I did, I, it happened that I, I came across this Ericsson and I'm, I'm just really enjoying learning again how to, how to, I'm learning how to sail from the perspective of actually owning the sailboat, mm -hmm. which is it's very, very different, right? Very, it's very it, it's different. It's extremely different. Yes, I So agree. anyway, that's, and we are at the gas station. Yeah, nice. A massive thank you to you, David. Your help with fueling up and getting Buga's paperwork sorted was truly priceless. We had such a wonderful conversation over yummy breakfast and it's moments like these that remind me how much this journey is about the people we meet along the way. Hearing that these videos inspire others to try things they might have hesitated to do, it means the world to me. So thank you David for this uplifting encounter. Now it's time to stow the diesel, secure everything on board and set off on our last leg across the Sea of Cortez to Guaymas, but more about that next time.